Welcome to Know His Love Stories, where we hear the voice of the Father through his children. Today we have with us Sean Eifert. He's from Kentucky. He's a student at Ohio University studying journalism. He's in his first year. So welcome, Sean. Brand new Catholic, just as of this recording, just came into the church um, a few days ago, really. Um, How are you doing? I'm great. Cool. Um, just living life. Living, living life. the Catholic life. Living the Catholic life. Yeah. Um, full of sacraments. Yes. Um, so yeah. Why don't before we jump into this, why don't we just say a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, a loving Father, thank you so much for the gift of this time. Thank you for the gift of Sean. I just ask that you be with him as he tells his story of your love and um, be with those who listen to his story so that in hearing his words and they come to a deeper experience and encounter and knowledge of how they are personally loved by our God in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cool. Well, why don't we begin... But the first question, as always, I just like to explore a time in your life, and this could happen multiple times in a person's life. It could happen a year from now, even. I mean, uh, talk to me, though, about a time in your life where you didn't know God's personal love for you. Maybe you doubted it or you weren't exposed to it in a way that you understood or was was intelligible to you. Um, but yeah, talk to me about that. Talk to me about that first, about a time in your life where you didn't really know God's personal love. Yeah. Um, I guess there's always been times like where I kind of, you know, like it's easy to doubt his love in a lot of our lives. Um, and it's easy to get into that mode of thinking where it's like, oh, I'm not worthy, but the thing that comes to mind the most for me um, or where I felt it probably the hardest was in my junior year of high school. Mm. Um, I kind of, I don't know, there was things that were going on within within my youth group that like I disagreed with at the time um, and like just teachings that made me feel, um, made me reflect on like sort of how I was acting at the time um, in my life and I just felt like, you know, I was a very, like the sin that I was, that I was kind of falling into that they were discussing and that kind of stuff, um, that kind of inhibited my relationship with God because I felt like, um, like, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of his love Mm -hmm. right now because I'm falling into these sins that I never really experienced before. Yeah. Yeah. How did that time how did it affect how you saw God? Like, how did you see God in the midst of all that? Um, I think for me, it was, it was inhibiting to see kind of his face in those moments and like, just understand that like I was, I was a child, um, Mm -hmm. in that moment. And I felt like I needed to be more Mm -hmm. than I was. Um, and it kind of, it, it showed that, uh, I had insecurities in my heart that kind of, um, didn't allow me to see the fullness of of God's love uh, for me and Mm. myself. So I feel like at that time in my life, it was just very, I had a very negative view view of like, not necessarily God, but of my standpoint with God. Mm. And that inhibited my, um, my ability to see him as a creator and to see him as, you know, a loving father. Did that also distort how you saw the people around you as well? Yeah. I, I'd say, there was a lot of anger in those in in that time in my life, like mm. a lot of anger towards, you know, youth group leaders, because I just didn't think that they were teaching like things that were true to me. Um, and I think that I just got a lot of anger. I, I experienced a lot of anger towards, you know, people in my life that were trying to help me, mm. but I just didn't see that at the time. Like they were, they were trying to teach me the truth, but I didn't want to accept the truth at the time because it was hurtful. Um, mm. And, and I felt that if I accepted the truth and I like looked at myself in a truthful manner, it would, it would only be painful. Mm. And you still, in the midst of that, were able to persevere and something happened, right? That you had an encounter with that personal love of God. Um, Talk to me about that. Like what happened like in the midst of that and, and how was that transformative for you? Um, I think really like ever since my junior year of high school the the first time that I kind of came into a deeper relationship with him was at the end of my senior year of high school 
um, just like really reflecting on how good my life was. Um, and, and, you know, I really loved my senior year of high school. I loved my friends. Um, I loved how my life was turning out. And I think that translated to me, um, going to church more often with my dad. Um, my dad's Catholic. Mm. Uh, he was converted, um, when he married, uh, his wife, she, um, was like cradle Catholic. Um, but yeah, so like I, I would go to church with him and I got more into mass and I understood it a little bit more, and I don't know, something just clicked, and it really was like, this is what I kind of want to do with my life, but it mm-hmm. wasn't as prevalent at the time, obviously, and then when I came to OU, um, I met Izzy, um, I, you know, I talked to Izzy on College Green, um, and she kind of, I don't know, that, that experience was like a godsend, it mm-hmm. was just like, I finally experience somebody who wants me to know the Lord, um, which I didn't feel like I really had before, um, or at least it was in a new way. Um, so yeah, just seeing that and being like, I'm here with these people that are truly loving of the Lord really just, it shined a light in me. Um, and I feel like it, it helped my heart to heal a little bit Mm -hmm. from the pain that I experienced before because I felt like I was unworthy. I was like, well, if these people um, in OU Catholics, you know, if they can love me and they can show me that they love God, like, what am I missing here? Um, Mm -hmm. And it kind of forced me a little bit to step into, you know, experiencing his love more fully. Mm, Beautiful. And at your baptism, even if it's something that you weren't able to really reap the fruits of until maybe recently, um, you were at least able to claim the title of being that beloved son of God the Father, that beloved child of God. What does that mean to you to be that beloved child of the Father? I mean, it's everything. Mm-hmm. And and I didn't really think that way for a long time. It was just recently, you know, I just reflect on, you know, because I just saw my friend Seth get baptized. And it just, that that to me was like all I've ever been waiting for is to just share that feeling with somebody Um firsthand because I got to see, you know, the inner workings of God in one of my best friends. Mm. Um, and he just really, he claimed Seth's life. And that made me re- realize that in the same way, God claimed me. Mm. Um, and, you know, just reflecting on my baptism, you know, I was like seven or eight years old. Um, so at that point in my life, I feel like I wasn't really able to understand truly what it meant. It was just sort of something that was, um, you know, my mom was like, okay, you're getting baptized. Um, so, uh, yeah, just knowing that I was claimed from birth to be, um, the son of God, to be a Mm -hmm. son of God, sorry, (laughs) to be a son of God. Um, it's just, it's incredible. It's, it's everything. Mm. And as that child of the father, he loves you personally, who loves all of his children personally, um, how do you experience that personal love? Like what is maybe your favorite way or your favorite ways that God reveals his personal love for you? I think just honestly, and and this is what I kind of reflected in my prayer when I was um, kind of trying to put my, put the the answers to your questions together. It's just like the relationships I have with others. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any more intimate way to see Jesus than to see him and the people that you hold most dear to your life. Mm. Um, and like your family and your friends are such examples of the way that Jesus loves you. But even in those instances, like people hurt you. So, you know, and I was reading this the other day, like, um, and, and, uh, the word on fire Bible, which I got for confirmation. Um, mm. I was reading and it, it said, you know, people will fall short, but how much more does, the God that created you love you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think seeing the imperfection in your relationships with others and knowing that your relationship with God is always going to be perfect is just, it's, it's a way to make anything or it's a way to make God's love personal in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, to see those, those relationships kind of represent, um, just a small portion of the amount of love that God has for you. Amen. Yeah, and as as we wrap up, I always like to just 
lean into the question of just acknowledging that there are so many people who do struggle with knowing God's personal love for them. Um, again, maybe for the same reasons that you struggled with or for a variety of other reasons, but based on the, out of your own experiences, what encouragement would you give to someone who, who might be struggling with that right now? I'd just say, you know, you're never not worthy. Um, and sometimes it can be hard because you feel like, um, pe- like, like, uh, people are putting expectations on you, but you had an expectation to be the son of the most good creator. Um, and I think that that's something that's really beautiful and people take advantage of, you know, we were created by somebody so like we, we are the most perfect uh, creation in his eyes and nothing you can do can inhibit that love that he has for you. Um, no matter how, how far you may feel that you've fallen from his graces, you know, he's always there and he's always going to love you the same way that he did when he created you. Um, and cre- he created you for a purpose. So that's what I'd say to them. Mm, beautiful. Well, thank you, Sean, for sharing your story today. And for anyone that's listening, if you'd like to share your story, um, connect with us on social media, on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, or check out our website, knowhis.love, and click us click on the Join Us tab uh, to connect with us as well.